Hi, I'm Flor, and I'm happy to moderate this panel. And I would like to thank uh, Vincent, Caroline, and Matan, and Arno for being here today with us. I will first uh, ask them to introduce themselves and their projects very briefly. So you've got one minute each. Caroline? Thank you very much. Uh, so I'm uh, Caroline Lamo and I'm the co-founder of Anaxago, an equity crowdfunding platform that we launched three years ago. Uh, so far, we managed to invest 20 million euros in about 50 French startups and, uh, well, going ahead then. <laughs> that was short. Hi, my name is Vincent. I'm the, the CEO of Kiss Kiss Bank Bank Technology, which is a company which is editing three platforms of crowdfunding, which is on a reward-based system called Kiss Kiss Bank Bank. Two others on the lending field, one which is called Hello Merci, which is, let's say, social lending. And the last one that we launched six months ago, which is called Lendopolis, uh, where, where you can invest directly money in uh, our really, really nice and pretty small French companies. Um, we've been collecting around 35 million euros since the beginning, and we keep on going. And uh, I've got a bunch of crazy men in my team which are really crazy with blockchain, which I don't really, really understand 100% uh, the item, but uh, my team is really pushing us about this. So I'm really happy that, that we can talk about this item today. Hello, I'm Arnaud Burgo. I'm the CEO of Yululi. Yululi is one of the biggest European reward-based uh, crowdfunding platform. We are in seven languages, so French, English, German, Italian, Spanish, Dutch, and Portuguese. Uh, and so our big specificity is that uh, any project before going online is coached by uh, someone of our team, which is a good ID manager. So it's not only a platform, there is also a dedicated service to help project creators be successful doing a crowdfunding campaign. So, so far, it's... Uh, more than uh, 8,600 projects that have been financed on Yululi. With a, so we have an all or nothing principle and the success rate on Yululi is 67%. Hi, I'm Matan Field. Uh, for a decade I was doing research in theoretical physics until one and a half year ago I uh, decided to found um, a, the transportation network, a decentralized transportation network, LAZUZ. Um, we, we try to formulate what, what a decentralized collaboration uh, looks like. And about five months ago, I understood that the bottleneck for this uh, future is actually formulating better the models and also building the tool, the platform. And then I decided to uh, start a new venture, uh, Backfeed, where we actually try to build the infrastructure for uh, millions of people to come together and uh, co-create. Thank you. So, Vincent, Caroline, and Arnaud, you, um, you are all three organizing platforms which, helps, uh, which help uh, projects to be funded. But how did your platform start? What, how was it funded initially? What's the story? So, uh, in, uh, Anaxago was initially funded with our unemployment, unemployment benefits. We are in France, we can, you can actually launch a company with uh, your unemployment money. Uh, but after a year or so of uh, bootstrapping with that money, we actually raised funds on our own platform. Uh, I mean, it is, we do, what, what Anaxago sells is a quick, easy, and transparent access to capital because uh, investors became shareholders of your company uh, through mainly the internet. That would have been weird to go uh, somewhere else, I guess. So we uh, raised funds twice on Anaxago since our launch. So your own platform. Okay. Yeah. Um, we raised like two times 900,000 euros, one time in, in June 2009. The, on, the other time was in, I think, June 2011 with a nice French VC called uh, Exange, which is uh, the ex-corporate VC of Le Groupe La Poste. And uh, the following way since the beginning, since, since day one, because when we been funding this company at the beginning, we had only roughly a, a video of presentation of our concept. It was really in the, in the early time, in 2008, and the world crowdfunding itself was really, really unknown. I don't remember if it exists at that time, really. And so they're they following us since the beginning, and we keep on going with them for, for the next round. And on our side, it's a little bit of a weird story because we did not raise cash with VCs. 
at the very beginning we knew that you really would take a lot of time before being a break even so we decided to set up another business within the same company which is a SEO business. Uh, we develop software for big websites that we sell to them. So it was a cash positive uh, business which helped us develop Ululi. And uh, so we just uh, worked with VCs, uh, friends uh, and relatives from the internet industry, which uh, entered the capital uh, which of this two activity company, which is quite uncommon. And then uh, when Ululi was break even uh, a year and a half ago, uh, we we split both companies and so we made a carve out. So now we have Ululi, which is a separate company only running uh, Ululi uh, activity and Botify, which is our other business, which is the other company. So, uh, so far we've not, we've not raised uh, cash with VCs and we are quite proud of that. So it's a, a very entrepreneurial uh, way of developing the business. And uh, well, then we'll see what we do. Okay, so that's interesting. You have three really different stories, funding stories. And I think for Madan, it's even Different. Uh, yeah. So basically, what we try to do is really making not only build a decentralized network or decentralized application, but also the collaboration itself, the project itself. We try to make it decentralized. So, so we had the idea, but we didn't have the tools ready. So, in initial phases, we actually uh, it was supported by the funds of the participators themselves, and at some points, we um, invented this kind of tool. Uh, some people call it crypto equity, but basically uh, we are issuing uh, crypto tokens. In the Zeus case, it was the Zeus tokens, and these tokens are, in some sense, uh, are analogous to financial ownership. So it's not it's not actual equity, but all revenues of the projects are actually distributed to people who hold Zeus tokens. So what we did, we did pre-sales of Zeus tokens uh, for people. So that we've actually made two rounds, and uh, actually the main crowd sale is going to happen uh, any day, any day now. Um, when we started Backfeed, actually we realized that those kind of models and tools are not yet uh, in full maturity. So we decided to start it as a company. We fundraised uh, just from from angels, uh, basically, and soon, uh, in in a few months' time frame, we'll actually decentralize the operation itself and make crowdfunding of crypto equity as well. Okay, then talking about crypto equity, um, Caroline, uh, what differences do you see with uh, between traditional uh, equity crowdfunding and crypto equity? Uh, do you think crypto equity is a new tool, a new stage, or something totally different from uh, traditional equity crowdfunding? I think that uh, crypto equity actually addresses different kind of investors than uh, traditional equity crowdfunding. The main thing about equity crowdfunding is enabling private investors, private investors like you and I. Well, you and I are 10 years older with a slightly bigger bank account, but people who are not actually used to invest in startups. Uh, so there is a huge um, thing. We, we put a huge uh, emphasis on trust on the platform because these people are first not not used to investing in, in, uh, in small businesses, second, not used to uh, the internet. So I think that crypto equity will address more professional investors uh, who are actually looking for new way to, uh, to invest in startup companies rather than the traditional uh, equity crowdfunding investors. Matan, uh, what do you think um, your, your investors when you raised money through crypto equity for Lazuz, uh, were there the professional uh, people that Karin just has described or was um, it different? Actually, it was quite the opposite. So it's just, it's just a tool that really let ordinary people just participate. Um, so th there are kind of levels for this uh, story. So the, the, the traditional crowdfunding People participate in the funding, but they're not actually getting access for the, for the earning of that. They get, maybe they get a discount, but they're not getting actually for the, for the revenue that is generated. Then there is a, a crypto equity quant funding where you actually uh, gain access for uh, real equities, real legal equity. And then there is even more a uh, modern point of view where you invent those tokens, and those tokens have some analogy uh, to equity, but they are not legal equity. So, for example, they don't entitle you with a, a governance. 
opportunities, but they entitle you with enjoying uh, the revenues. So you are sharing the risk and the success of a project. And actually, it's, it's actually, um, I would say it's actually more fit for the, for, the, for, the real, for the ordinary people who are not uh, uh, professional investors. Okay. Vincent, since you have experience with uh, a lot of different projects through the three platforms that you describe, um, Kiss Kiss Bank Bank, Hello Merci, and uh, Lendopolis, uh, do you think that crypto equity could apply to all this variety of projects? Um, if you look at Swarm, this platform where you can manage both of the system, I mean, lending is quite complicated, I think, but at least reward and equity, um, I think it's a good complementary tools uh, to find another way to finance this kind of project. As you said, I think the most interesting point about uh, this kind of currency is that you drop out of the, let's say, classical family bunch of people which are already loaded of money, which are dedicated to invest in this, this crowdfunding and, and equity platform. So I think that as a big fan of the de decentralized vision of economy, of course, I think that this way is a fantastic way to change things and once again to give uh, power or empowerment to normal people and then to get involved in the economy. So as a matter of fact, I think that is really, really, really good tool. And once again, my team is pushing a lot since at least one or two years that we can adapt the, the, the blockchain to our platform, which is quite complicated right now, but uh, we are really thinking about it. So I think it will be done one of these days. And, uh, Beside that, I think that behind the, the money story, you, you've got a kind of manifest behind the ID, which is not only you know money flows or, 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 or project funded, which is really uh, linked to a vision of the, the society or the, or the economy that you, you have or not. And as long as you believe that the economy doesn't work because it's too centralized because, the, because the, of the oligarchy, and, and if you want to make it new and to rebuild the economy in the, in the better way, decentralization is at least one of the, the biggest way to follow and I think that this tool is the, the perfect example. I don't know if it can match for every case but at least as an idea, as a vision, as a uh, uh, point of view to follow, I think it's, it's a perfect tool. Okay, thank you. Uh, and that's Arno, I would like to know um, what do you think, because I know that Ululi or other crowdfunding platform, uh, especially the reward-based crowdfunding platforms, have put a lot of effort into building community. Um, so what do, how do you think these communities um, will maybe take part into crypto equity or not? Uh, I think they will take part, but in many years. Um, it's just a basic thing, I think we all heard about what uh, cryptocurrency is and what Bitcoin is. But just a poll, who already actually made a Bitcoin transaction in this room? Can you raise the hand? Okay, so, and I think we are not a very representative kind of people uh, since we are all involved in maybe tech and internet and collaborative economy activities, so passionate about all these questions. And it's minus, uh, it's maybe 3% of the people here. And uh, if you want people to really endorse uh, what's crypto equity, which is a major uh, disruption into the financial, uh, uh, into financial activities, because uh, it means uh, you don't need any more brokers. Uh, if all the, the equities now are crypto equities, then uh, you do not need to have a centralized market. People can exchange directly between themselves. That's right. So, so it, it's a huge evolution. But the first thing is uh, crypto equity are based on a principle on a technology that is already developed for cryptocurrencies. The first thing is for people to understand what is a cryptocurrency and to uh, really use it. And uh, I think it's something that can't be stopped because uh, maybe Bitcoin is going to be forbidden. Um, in the European Union, it has already been forbidden in Russia and in China. Maybe the European Union is going to do that because they do not want to lose their monetary supremacy. But another, uh, I think another cryptocurrency is going to, to arrive and it's the premises of a, of a world currency, uh, which is absolutely huge. Uh, and I think this is a first step before you can think that crypto uh, equities are going to be really uh, popular. So uh, I think it will happen, but maybe it will take 
take, uh, I don't know, 20 years. I don't know, crypt yeah. cryptocurrency, do you think that in five years it will be extremely common to use that? I'm not sure. Maybe it will be 10 years. And I think that uh, crypto equity is, is the next step. Uh, so yes, it will happen. Uh, and communities, various communities are going to to endorse that, uh, but at this stage, I think it's very specific people. And si since it's very specific people, uh, you do not have, I think, a lot of liquidity in your investment. And so uh, you need liquidity uh, if you want uh, something really to develop within the financial market. So I think there are a lot of steps to, that need to, to be passed before it's really common. Okay. Um, just before I ask uh, another few questions to our speakers, um, I wanted to remind you that you can uh, ask us questions through slide do, slide dot do, and uh, I'm going to have a look at them and bring them to our panelists. So, Matan, could you tell us a little bit more, uh, since you have experienced crypto equity and you're building a tool uh, to so that other projects will be able to use it as well. Um, could you tell us about maybe the risks of crypto equity? What, what do you think we need to be careful about? Right, so there is one obvious risk which everybody talks about, which is the legal implication. Of course, we're entering a, a, a land nobody, nobody walked before, and of course there are a lot of incentives, as, as you described, for central bodies to uh, make it unsuccessful. So that's one, one area of challenge, which I think people actually here in the audience are, are working on and, and doing a lot, of, uh, a lot of good advancement. So that's, of course, one obvious uh, challenge. Um, there, is, there is less obvious challenge where, where I, I told you about the ZUS tokens as an example. So we, we you initiate tokens, and those tokens carry some financial um, uh, revenue with it. But I, I haven't told you what is the model behind it. So there are a whole bunch of models in the market. And one, I would say, a risk is that in some, in some sense, this kind of crypto equity field, we are inventing economy. So we're inventing, each time we're inventing a token, we're actually inventing a new type of economy. So of course there is the risk we're inventing the wrong economy. And that's something we should uh, actually play, with, play around with. And then I'm quite sure that we'll, have, we'll see many different economies, some will success, some will fail, and we'll lear learn better. A third challenge is, is, or risk if you want, is that, again, just, just, as the, just as we invent the economy, we also invent the platform. So the, the third risk is that we're, we're inventing the wrong platform in some sense. We'll make it inefficient to actually deal with those uh, tokens. So actually, that's exactly the reason I decided that we have to spend more time about reformulating or formulating better the, the economy, the models, and the platform before we launch more application, so that the application, when we launch them, they will be more successful, more tested, and more have more ground solid, more solid ground. So, um, how would you describe Backfeed um, more in detail, maybe? Right. So we are really so. Just imagine that. Uh, and millions of people want to come together and do anything. It, they can do a, a ride-sharing network, they can do decentralized insurance network where people insure each other, they can do decentralized publishing, a book a network, or anything else. And the way is, how do actually they come together? How do they share co-creation and distribute the value between them uh, in a fair way? Where do they do that? In, on what platform? How do they, what is the model of sharing that value? It's, it's something like, you can imagine a, a crowdsourcing is where you have a company, the company divides the process of uh, making a product or a service, and then they, they can crowdsource one stage of the process. Maybe crowdsourcing the ideation process, some company crowdsource the design process and so on. And crowdfunding is, is really crowdsourcing the funding process. Now imagine you take a company, divide the whole stages of the process, and you crowdsource all of them, and then the last stage is you're actually cutting the head. There is no more something, some, someone who manages all this. It's actually self-managed by the people. And we are building the protocols, the models, and the platform for, for, for just such co-creation. Okay, thank you. Um, I don't see any question on Slido, but maybe you have some Wi-Fi issues. I believe you do. You, so uh, if anyone wants to ask a question, uh, he can also, he or she can also raise his hand and we can also take questions the, the old way. 
Um, Caroline, uh, I wanted to ask you, what, what obstacles um, do you see into the crypto equity development this for next few months or years? Um, well, um, as I said, I think that's uh, a matter of, of trust that you get a gain from the, uh, from the investors. Because uh, as, uh, as you rightfully said, there are ordinary people just like us and they got doubts, they have to, uh, the, I mean, for instance, we got, I think, we got 45,000 members on an Exago, investors members. 45,000. Well, only 3,000 of them already invested, but most of them uh, scroll the website every month when we uh, set up new projects that we select, that we curated for them. But uh, the web, the internet is not enough. They gotta meet uh, the entrepreneur in person. This is why we threw events on a regular basis every month as well. And we got more than 300 people coming every month to, uh, to these events because they, you know, they need to kind of touch the guy uh, to fill his project. And I think that um, crypto equity will be another uh, complication to this trust process. Okay. Um, Vincent, how do you build trust? How do you build trust? With the three examples of the three platforms that you have created. Transparency, that's the first item. I think behind transparency, as I said before, and that's why I'm really interested in these kind of subjects, you need to get a kind of vision, something which is linking all of us through the same direction with a, maybe a, another view and a, another attitude uh, to project ourselves in something really, really different. I think if you've got transparency and a manifesto vision, I think it, it starts to be really easy. And after, after all, in our fields, uh, you need to be a, um, a good provider of, of technology because if the product that you're providing to the people is far below your vision, and of course it doesn't work. And I think if you've got transparency, vision, a good product in our field, and you know that by heart, I mean, in the, in the sharing economy, although I don't like the word, you, you know that, and let's say in the peer-to-peer -peer economy, I think it's the, it's the good start. It's not really, really easy to achieve, but as long as you've got those three legs, then the, the, the story can begin. Okay. Any questions from you guys? Matthew, is this crypto act going to work for other issues or just for transportation? No, this, this, the model that we build is completely generic. You can, once you have this kind of platform for collaboration, for massive collaboration, by the way, I should say also for free collaboration. So any participant is completely free actor, free agent, can do whatever he or she wants. And the model, the incentivization model takes care that for the alignment of interest of people, but it's completely free collaboration. Once you establish that kind of platform, you can launch it any kind of collaboration, any kind and any, any, any size. We, we, we are already in, in touch with quite many groups all over the world to build, to launch over the platform for decentralized insurance, for decentralized ecological footprint offset, uh, decentralized journalism, Hey, uh, thanks a lot for being here, you guys. I'm over here. Um, as I listen to, to you talk about these platforms and also um, you mentioned Swarm and some of these other platforms, I think they're fantastic. And I actually don't worry that the average person won't understand what it's like to share in the value of something. I think they get that and they want that. What concerns me as an entrepreneur is I have run into some hurdles when it comes to talking to potential future venture capitalists, uh, also lawyers, who say, stay away from this. Um, this is an unknown territory and it could bite you in the ass. Could you talk a little bit about that? Well, you know, as, uh, as in crowdfunding equity, we were, we were talking about that just before entering the, the area, that uh, crypto equity is that is the you know that's weird thing that nobody uh, nobody really uh, believe it's gonna take off, take off just like 
it was for it was the case for crowdfunding a couple of years ago. So as the first lawyers we who uh, accepted to uh, deal with crowdfunding campaigns, you will have the first lawyer accepting to deal with a crypto equity campaign and uh, get everyone, I guess. Well, you know the rules. If you want to make business, don't talk with lawyers, don't talk with financial. No, that's the way. So, so actually, I, I, I was really identified with this question, but I was quite amazed to just discover the opposite. I mean, in the last year, I think more than a more than dozen of venture capital contacted me. And actually, I think there is an amazing pace of maturity that uh, the ordinary investors are actually understanding that this is the future and want to take part of it. Uh, serious venture capital, which, who really understand the picture. And I think, actually, I, I think I really see how the old world and the new world actually pollinating each other rather than competing. Hello. So, um, so right now there's a lot of equity crowdfunding platforms and they're, they're based in a lot of countries and they're, you know, they're very heavily regulated. So what you're saying is that if crypto equity crowdfunding becomes a thing and the regulation becomes really good, then we don't need any local equity crowdfunding platforms anymore and we'll have a winner takes it all. So what's your input on that? Did I say that? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, uh, tough question. Um, does uh, the raise of uh, crypto equity means the death of equity crowdfunding? Uh, this is this is what you meant, right? Local. Local. Um, well, um, I believe that's um, well that that won't be the case. That's n I think that's not the same model. That's not just like crypto, crypto equity is a new way uh, of doing equity crowdfunding. It's just uh, it could be a new way to do, uh, I guess, another another kind of that would be another way of another platform. So, to me, not the same business. I guess. No. So I, I'm not on a equity crowdfunding platform. So yes, I think yes, it's the case. Because since uh, all the blockchain technology is completely peer-to-peer, -peer, you have a real complete disintermediation. And so uh, at this stage, crowdfunding is still intermediated because you have centralized platform. And if you adapt the blockchain technology to that, of course, you don't need any more platforms. So yes, uh, it's the case. It might be the end of the stage of crowdfunding at which we are now, which is still a little bit intermediated with centralized platform. I, I actually, firstly, I agree 100% with uh, this claim. But secondly, I think more than, more than the stage we don't need, will not need, uh, it's not that we won't need many local, actually I think the next stage is that all of these platform will come together, just like uh, you can imagine that in the, in the early days of the internet we had many internets, and then they, come, they start spoke together and generate one internet. So I think that the same thing will happen here. We'll have many platforms, which eventually will speak together and create one network effect, one platform. I don't see any hands. Okay, uh, I had a question for Arno. Um, when will you will us be able to pay or participate into a crowdfunding campaign using bitcoins, for example? In fact, we thought a lot, a lot about that uh, a year and a half ago. And in fact, Bitcoin is just not a, a payment system. It's a currency. So you have to, if you want to do that, projects would only be able to, to raise cash uh, in Bitcoins. Otherwise, we would have to manage the, uh, the risk of uh, exchange. And we do not want to do that, given uh, the fluctuation of the Bitcoin. Uh, and the second part is... We did not do that also for political reasons, uh, because at this stage, uh, Bitcoin is really not uh, appreciated in many, many, many uh, political uh, thinkers and uh, people of some power there. And so uh, since crowdfunding has, is in a good mood <laughs> on the political way, we thought it might be too early stage uh, to do that. And it would give a very bad perception, because so far, uh, we have to say it, uh, Bitcoin definitely a lot of people think it's just used on the black market, you know, uh, to buy drugs. 
uh, and it's a tool uh, to make model laundering. So uh, we think it's maybe too early stage, uh, but it's, uh, uh, we love this technology. Uh, we really think about that, but uh, it's too early. What about you, Vincent? I might give you the answer lately. I mean, my, my team, the tech team is really crazy with it. I've got two guys on the team which are, let's say, speculators really highly time on, on, on Bitcoin since the beginning. But I agree with uh, Arnaud. Since I, uh, honestly, I, I understand most, most of it, but for me, it's too, too cloudy yet. I mean, uh, I think it's really, really early stage. We keep thinking about it. And, and for me, uh, as I told you before, it's the vision behind it, which is really interesting. And um, the product itself, specifically first, to mix it with normal currencies. Uh, and Arno is right, with all the fluctuation, speculation about this currency, they need, it can be difficult to manage. The idea is really, really, really interesting. Uh, to do it really uh, operationally, it's quite complicated. Question? Yes. I'm sorry, this isn't a question, but I work with Swarm, and we did raise money, we raised Bitcoin uh, specifically to crowdfund ourselves a year ago in July. We raised a million dollars, more or less the equivalent in Bitcoin. Unfortunately, the value of Bitcoin has gone down, so it didn't last quite that long. But then after that, we also crowdfunded a Bitcoin comic book, and that was about $25,000. So you can do crowdfunding with Bitcoin. Thanks a lot. So I have a question about the crowd equity or crowdfunding through um, using crypto equity and being able to, if you're rich in this system, then you can buy into the new system and be rich in that one. For example, there was one guy who bought something like $2 million worth of Ether for the new Ethereum currency. And how do you create new money without being linked to the old system, the old corrupt system? Um, so, it, firstly, it's a, it's, a, it's a deep and complicated, well, the, the question is simple, the answer is complicated, but basically, um, each time you're creating a new token, you're really creating a new economy. There is something behind that token. The token is a promise for something. So, for example, in, in Ethereum case, the token Ether is a promise to be able to use. It's like, it's like a coupon, eventually, a jeton. It's eventually when the, 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 the system that they develop is working, then with those Ether, you'll be able to process your information on that system. So it's a promise, but it's a specific promise. Then you have many tokens, which refer to many promises. Now we can, can start trading with those to between those tokens. And each of them will have different economy behind it, but then you have a one open free market uh, to tie them all. So that's like a short version, maybe. Or maybe, maybe you should tell me if, I, if, if that answered the question or not. So can we, could we like to ask again? So how do you keep a new system? How, does, how can you start it where every player is equal and there isn't inequality from the beginning? Oh, now I understand. Thank you. So the, the question that you're asking, what is the distribution protocol for tokens, right? Who gets the tokens? I mean, those who purchase the tokens that you understand, but who else get the tokens? So that's a good question. And again, that's each project will have its own protocol, will have its own economy. But basically, the, the common thread between them is that the following law, whoever contribute to the process, whoever contribute to the establishment of the network, whoever contribute to building the network, to building the system, is receiving token. But then you should ask, okay, but how much token for which contributions and so on. For example, Bitcoin, if you are mining, which means that you are authenticated the transaction over the system, you are giving value for the network and thus you're receiving Bitcoin. And then you can ask, okay, but how much, how, how about marginal actions? Who get the tokens? So that's exactly the kind of question we try to answer in Backfeed, to have a generic protocol for, uh, with which every contributor to the network will receive the right amount of tokens for his or her contribution in proportion to her contribution and also to the risk she's taken uh, in, and in, a, in a generic way. Last question from, from you. 
No. Okay. Um, just to 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 end um, and before closing our panel, I just wanted to know um, briefly the big numbers, the, the big figures uh, behind your each of the platforms. Uh, just so that the audience, all of us, uh, understand maybe the the different sizes. So uh, how many projects? Okay. How much? Etc. So uh, an ex ago, we got forty five thousand members. Uh, Three thousand of them are actual investors. They invest uh, on average twice a year on a project. We invested so far collected and invested 20 million euros uh, in 50 startups. Uh, that is not counting the uh, investment funds or business angels network that we work with uh, and that will put the amount to uh, 25, 26 million, uh, million invested. And uh, well, on average, um, project on equity crowdfunding raise, uh, raises uh, 300,000 300, euros? Yeah, 300,000. Between 100,000 and 2 million euros. But on the very 300,000. Um, so on the three platforms all cumulated, you've got like around 33 million euros since at the beginning, and uh, a little bit more than 31 million on Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. So the two others are, are really, really new. We've got a community of uh, 600,000 people. Meaning that if Kiss Kiss Bang Bang technology was a town, then it will be a third, the third biggest town in France, just behind Paris and Marseille. Um, we've got project, let's say, starting at 100 euros to 500,000 euros, roughly. And i um, going to say else than that. The, the, the difference between the first one and two others is that on, on the first one, the average donation per people it's around 50 euros. On the social uh, lending platform, it's around it's around 120 euros. And on the third one, on Lendopolis, so when you invest through lending system to, to companies, then it's around 250 euros. And which means three different kind of addressing project, three different kind of projects, uh, three different kind of mentality. Sorry, and then. You can enter on Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, let's say, with an artistic ID or with a creative ID. You can enter to Hello Merci, let's say, with a micro-entreprise ID or a personal project. And you can uh, address your project to Lem de Police if you are a PME, Francaise, more than two years old, uh, with a good ID behind it. That's it for us. And you really, so far, it's uh, 700... 15,000 users, so it's about uh, 1,200 new users each day, which subscribe on your release uh, those days. Uh, uh, <laughs> 8,600 projects financed. Uh, it's about 20 projects financed each day. Uh, and 67% uh, rate, and uh, 32 million collected. And those days, it's about 2 million collected each month. And a final word from Matan. I, I let you conclude this panel oh. with whatever you want to say. <laughs> okay. So I think eventually the, the, the main lesson is really to learn to play together. I think th this is really the essence of it. So that's one thing. We just need to learn how to play together and develop a better future. Uh, and I really, I, I really believe this is the future. I mean, I think decentralized organization and decentralized crowdfunding and everything will simply... Uh, be proved to be so much more efficient than any existing model today that will, so all the existing model, all existing organization will just need to choose either to adapt or to sync uh, once this kind of uh, future comes about. Thanks a lot. And uh, we'll end it here. Thank you.